welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, um, where I think by the time this video goes live, we may have actually hit 400,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is, it's quite unbelievable, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I was speaking to Mark earlier on, neither of us can really believe it. Um, and thank you so much. If you're one of those subscribers, and we sometimes hear from people who joined us really, really early on in this journey, um, well, yeah, just just thank you. It's it's made us both very proud and happy, and somewhat disbelieving uh, that this this small channel <laughs> that we um, we started because we're so in love with puzzles um, has become what it what it has. Um, so yeah, big thanks, and we're going to make that four hundred thousand subscriber video very soon, where we're, we'll answer all the questions you've sent in over the last couple of months. Um, now, what are we doing today? Well, as a result of reaching the milestone, we have we have actually received a lot of 400,000 subscriber puzzles. Uh, and this one has been absolutely raved about by the testers. Uh, it's just called 400,000 subscribers, somewhat appropriately. And it's by Peter Venus, who goes under the pseudonym PJOTRV. So I hope, Peter, you won't mind if I use Peter rather than P-J-O-T-R-V all the time, because I find it easier to say. Um, yeah, apparently this is a brilliant puzzle, and it's really thematic as well. I was just reading the rules uh, before I turned on the webcam, and the 400 in the grid and this weird thermometer at the bottom definitely have some stuff going on. So I'll read you the rules in just a second or two. Um, what do I need to uh, make you aware of? Tomorrow night, Mark and I are going to be attempting to play a game called Bubba Is You, which a lot of you have asked for. We're going to be um, live streaming at 10 p.m. UK time. I'll try and remember to put a card on the screen in case any of you are interested in joining us. We would very much welcome your company and we hope we won't embarrass ourselves, although we might. Um, then other things to mention. Well, the other big thing that's going on, it's nearly the 1st of October. If you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, there are a couple of things to mention at the moment. The first is there is a solution video to this wonderful 6x6x6 Sudoku uh, that Sam Kappelman Lyons created. Um, if you want to play this, by the way, just click. There's a link to it under this video and you can play this in our software. It's a really, really beautiful puzzle. And many people are describing it as a bit like 3D Sudoku because effectively you can view these grids as sitting on top of each other and you can't repeat a digit in any of the positions. It's really lovely. And uh, there's a solution video on Patreon if you want to know how to do it. Um, the other thing that's coming on Patreon in on the 1st of October is, of course, the Lockout Lines Sudoku Hunt. It's called Padlocked. Um, it's been created by many of the great and the good of the uh, world Sudoku community. And um, it, it's an incredible collection of puzzles. I'll tell you that the document on, on which the puzzles appear is 22 pages long. I think there are 15 or 16 puzzles to solve. Um, some of them are quite tricky. All of them are very interesting and you're going to love them. And for the first correct entry we receive, you'll get a, um, a key to play Bubba Is You for free. And if you, if anybody sends in uh, a correct entry, uh, you'll go into a hat to win a second key. So do try and, uh, or do, do give the pack a go, see how you get on. Um, I'm really indebted actually to Tall Cat and Riff Clown, who are the inventors of lockout line rules. And um, they have also included in the pack three, um, sort of tutorial puzzles on how lockout lines work. I did do one on the channel the other day. It was the first one I'd done, um, but it's a brilliant idea to include a sort of tutorial to it as well. So there are three tutorial puzzles um, to have a go at as well, which is it's great. Have a go. It's, it's not long in the offing, just a couple of days away. Now, all that said and done, let's get on with this puzzle and I'll read you the rather interesting rules. So we have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a white dot contain consecutive digits and not all white dots are given. So what does this mean? Let's look at this domino here. You can see there's a white dot in the middle of it and that means these two digits are consecutive. So if this square was a two, this square would either have to be a one or a three. Uh, in order to be consecutive with the two, and that's how it works. What does it mean by not all white dots are given? Well, that means that, for example, it's absolutely fine if, if these are consecutive digits. Just because there's no white dot between them doesn't mean they can't be consecutive. So the white dots are giving positive information. They're telling us that the dominoes they divide are definitely um, consecutive 
numbers. Uh, now, the gray line is a double digit thermometer where it alternates tens digits and units digits. Starting at the bulb, the double digits increase along the thermometer. All double digits added together sum to 400. Let's stop there and see if we can understand what that means. So that means that we have to view this thermometer. This will be a number. Let's make it, I don't know, let's make it 37 because it's a double digit number. Now this double digit number here has to be greater than 37 because it's further up the thermometer. So like mercury would rise up a thermometer as the temperature increases, so the digits must increase as we move along this rather large thermometer. So this could be, I don't know, 41 then this one would have to be greater than 41. So it could be 56, etc. And we've got to keep going until we get to the highest number, which is going to be here. I have just heard Maverick take off. <laughs> he always seems to know when I'm recording, um, but it wouldn't seem to be a 400,000 subscriber video if Maverick didn't make an appearance. So hello, Maverick, you're most welcome. Um, now, the final rule is the following. Digits along each purple line multiply to 400. Now that's a rule you don't get every day. So that means those, how many digits have we got there? Six, those six digits, you multiply them together, you get 400. Same thing there with the zero, same thing with the four there. Um, so do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. Um, now, I say let's get cracking. I don't feel like the thermometer is going to do very much for me. Um, let me just actually, let me just check what the average number on this thermo is. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight two digit numbers to make 400. So we're averaging 50. <laughs> oh, that's so, that's so annoying. So we're averaging a very average number basically along the thermometer. So as suspected, the thermometer is probably not where we start here. Um, so what about the, f the product lines? What are the factors of 400 that we can use in a Sudoku? Well, five is an obvious one, isn't it? So five divided by 400 leaves 80. Ah, there you go, immediately. Immediately, double five, I think is gonna be forced, isn't it? Because that's gonna get us down to 16. And then we need yeah, then we need the rest of the digits to multiply together to give 16. So yeah, that's, this is actually quite a sensible way of looking at this, I think. We've got to think about the, the factors of 400 that we can legitimately put in a Sudoku. And we can use 5 for sure, but once we've used 5, we're going to need another 5. Um, otherwise, we're not going to be able to do it. The rules of mathematics will, 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 will cause us a problem. And then we're going to be left with 16. Now 16, the problem with 16 is that it has a lot of factors that you can put into a Sudoku. So you could put in, well, you could do double fours and ones, couldn't you? Or you could do eight and two and ones, or you could do one, two, two and four. So there's, I think there's, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Well, certainly that's going to give some optionality along the along the lines. But yeah, let's stick with the idea. There's got to be two fives um, on each of these purple lines because oh yeah, that's immediately interesting when we look at the four. Because where are we going to put two fives on this four line? Well, we can't put two fives in those four squares because then you're going to repeat a digit in box one. So this square here has to be a five. And then we need a second five on the four line. That's going to have to be in one of those two squares. And, and now the other digits are going to have to, oh, some sort of gale force wind just coming on outside. Maverick won't like that. Um, and so we're going to have three digits that are not five on this four line that have to multiply together to give 16. Now, do we know anything about those then? We're, yeah, they're different. That's what we know about them. They're different digits. So how can we select three digits from one, two, four, and eight, such that they multiply to 16 only with one, two, and eight, surely? 
Yes, that's the only way of doing it. So we actually know what this four line is made up of. It's one, two, and eight, and a five either here or here. Um, and that's rather beautiful. Now let's try the second zero then. Although actually I'm wondering, I think that zero might be more restricted because it's, it's got two fives looking at it. But let's anyway, let's have a look at this one. We need to put two fives on this zero. You can't put fives there. You can't put fives there. You can't put two fives in this domino for obvious reasons. So there's got to be a five here. And now there's got to be a five in one of those two squares. And then the other four cells on this zero multiply to 16. But this is more complicated because we can repeat digits this time. And well, we're going to need to repeat digits because if you multiply one, two, four and eight together, you get 64, which is rather too many. I mean, the knowledge bombs on cracking the cryptic, they keep coming. 64 is a bigger number than 16. There, I've said it. Um, hmm. OK, I don't know if I can actually do that, though. I don't know how to restrict that. And I'm tempted to look at this other zero, to be honest, because I can see where I can put another five in the grid. We know there's two fives on this. We know those fives are not in these three cells because of Sudoku. Um, Peter, this is outrageous making me do Sudoku in a Sudoku puzzle. Where's the set theory? Where's all the stuff I normally have to do? Anyway, these three digits here have to contain two fives. Those two obviously cannot contain two fives. That's going to repeat a five in box three. So this squares a five, which forces a five at the top of the grid because you now can't put a five here. So we've now got two fives here and the rest of this, the other four digits are ones, twos, fours and eights. I'm actually just one. Oh, yes. In fact, yes. In fact, what I should have done down here, I think, is the same thing. I should have pencil marked all these squares with ones, twos, fours and eights because I've suddenly realized that there are. Uh, there might not be a second restriction, but there's definitely a restriction in row three. Those five digits now have to be selected from the five digits. One, two, four, five and eight. So they are a quintuple. Um, and that means, ah, th this is really interesting actually, because in this quintuple here, there is definitely a four in one of those two cells. Now that means that in this zero, we've got three digits that are five, five and four. And that means that the other three digits have to multiply together to give four. Oh no, I was about to say, which means they have to be double one four, but they don't. They could be double two one. Oh, you rotten thing. That's unbelievable. Well, okay, there's no eight. There is no eight, that's for true. Because if there's a four on this, on this zero, there can't be an eight as well, because four times eight is 32. Um, Right, so this is either double one, double four, or it's a four in one of those and then a one and a double two. I don't know if we can actually resolve that. Oh, I know what we can do though. In this quadruple, or sorry, quintuple I should say, let's give it its correct term. In this quintuple, the eight is definitely on this side. So this square can't be an eight. So this is down to being one or two now. Um, what about this Kropke dot? So this Kropke dot, the digits that are available for this Kropke dot are three. That's not going to work because you can't put two or four on it. Six, seven. Oh, it's six and seven. It's three. Yes, the way to think about this is that the four cells that aren't yet placed in row three are the digits three, six, seven and nine. And the only two of those that are consecutive are six and seven. So that's a six, seven pair. That's a three, nine pair. And so far, this is a really, really beautiful puzzle, which is exactly what I've hoped, actually. Um, Peter's puzzles are always interesting. And not normally brutally hard, but that's probably famous last words.
So twos, fours, and eights. Do we know? <laughs> I'm trying to think if I know anything about this zero. This is actually this is now getting difficult, isn't it? Because how on earth am I going to make more progress? I've got a, th a th sort of a triomino here that's got to contain three consecutive digits. But I don't think that that's particularly onerous. Um, it, it's not this, is it? I don't think it is the, the thermometer. It's averaging, the average digits along the double digit thermo is a 50. Oh, the tens digits, maybe. The tens digits can't be the same, can they, can they in row, row eight here? Mm, oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on a moment. Hang on a moment. I did not appreciate something. It is true what I've just said about the tens digits having to all be different numbers. But actually, this digit here, which is a tens digit, cannot be the same as that digit, which is the next ten dig tens digit. So actually, the tens digits have to increase along the whole thermometer. Oh, that's absolutely lovely. Right. And there's there's eight. Right. OK, so there is a real restriction on this thermo, which I hadn't appreciated at all, because because now we know the tens digits are eight different digits of the Sudoku. So there's only one degree of freedom. So we're going to have to do this sort of thing. Yeah, and this is gorgeous because this five sees this cell. So this cannot be a five, it has to be a four. And once this has to be a four, that has to be a three, that has to be a two, and that has to be a one. Good grief. Oh, and now this is going to do things. Look, this four is doing things by Sudoku. Four comes out of here. Uh, I don't think that does resolve what sort, what the nature of the zero is in terms of multiplication. Three here, two here, two, so twos come out of those two. One comes out of this one. Oh, oh, that's disappointing. I thought this was going to do marvelous things, and it hasn't at all. So the, does the fact these have to be 1, 2, 3, and 4 mean these have to be 6, 7, 8, and 9 in order to average? Because we need to get overall to an average of 50, and we know these four digits are definitely too low. So that sort of feels to me like these ones need to be high. That's probably... Um, actually, maybe... I'm just wondering if we can do something with the units digits, actually, because we know what these four squares, um, let me just highlight them. These are four units digits. And if because this square is restricted. Yeah, look at this. So if this these digits here are five, six, sevens, eights and nines. Now, if this is a five, if this tens digit is a five, the units digits in row eight a six, seven, eight, and nine, which add up to 30. But remember, we've got to make sure that all of the units digits together add up to a number that ends in a zero, because 400 ends in a zero. And I can tell you that when you add numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, and 60 together, or whatever, you're going to get a number that ends in a zero. So the units digits definitely also have to end in a zero in order for us, when we sum them, in order to reach 400 overall. Now, if this is a five, these do add up to a number ending in zero. They add up to 30, and therefore these would also have to add up to a number ending in zero, which could be 10 or 20. And it, oh, this, yeah, okay, this is actually, this is really cool. This is very, very interesting because these four digits cannot add up to 30. Because if they do, they have to be six, seven, eight, one, and nine, and none of these tens digits could be filled. So if this is a five, these digits either add up to 10 or 20. 
and that means that the unit digits overall will either add up to 30 plus 10 or 30 plus 20, which is 40 or 50. And if this is a 6, these digits will be 5, 7, 8, and 9. They will add up to 29, which means these have to either add up to 11, 21, or 31. 31 is absolutely impossible. You cannot make four different digits in a Sudoku add up to 31. So these are either going to add up to 11 or 21. So it's the same. It's the same. The, the units digits in this puzzle either add up to 40 or 50 which is that's amazing isn't it that that it, that would never have occurred to me and that means that the tens digits have to either add up to 360 or 350 or well if we add up add them up without considering them as tens they either have to add up to 36 or 35 Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. And I'm wrong. No. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right that I've done it. I'm wrong that, that this square is not a six, actually. That's weird. That's so strange. But let me explain. We've worked out that the tens digits here, I've just highlighted all of them, either have to sum up to 35 or 36. But they are eight different digits from a sudoku and um, oh it's so appropriate in in the 400,000 subscriber video we get to use the secret because the simplest way of thinking about that is not to add them up is to use the secret now the secret which we only tell very special people and there's probably 400,000 of you out there who know what this secret is as a result is that the numbers one to nine add up to 45 so if we are adding up eight different digits and we get the number 35, which is one of the options that we were looking for, what would the ninth digit in this Sudoku have to be? It would have to be 45 minus 35 is 10. Now there is, no, there is no such thing in a Sudoku as a 10. I cannot put a 10 in a Sudoku. So it's not possible ever to make these, diff these eight different digits add up to 35. So they must add up to 36. And then the digit that's missing is 45 minus 36, which is nine. There is no nine in the tens digits. Therefore, that square is an eight. That's a seven, that's a six, and that's a five. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Peter, I'm already so impressed with this. So now we can just get rid of these squares. These squares are now, oh, this is doing all sorts of things, look. I just want to check the, because I think we can now work out what these digits have to add up to, because we now know we've got 30 in there, and we've got 360 in the tens digits. So we need 10 in these squares, and there are four different digits, so they have to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. QED, and now I can do, now the bottom row needs a 5 and a 9, and there's a 5 here. So this square's a 5, this square's a 9. That square's a three, so that's not an eight anymore. And we can get rid of four from here. We can get rid of threes from here. We can get rid of one and two from here. We can get rid of eight from here. We can get rid of seven from both of those. That crocky dot might get interesting now. We can get rid of six and nine from this cell. And we probably can do more Sudoku vertically. Let me just check from what we've just got given. This eight is getting rid of those squares and making this and that square actually. Ah, and this can't be a two either I've just seen. Oh, the, and this is doing mad numbers of things. Crazy, look, this five also. Where do, we know there's a five in one of those two squares on the four. So it has to be here now. So that's a five. This is not a five. And I want to just think about the fact I've now got a one and a four on this zero. Yes, well, the obvious point then is you can't have an eight on this zero as well, because if you eight times four is 32. We know that the digits that are not five on the zeros are multiplying up, multiplying up to 16. So we now know that these three squares Yes, so they can't include a 2 now, can they? 
because I can't double two. Yeah, this is so beautiful. In this one, you can go double two one in the extra squares, but you can't here anymore. Once this is a one and a four, these three squares have to multiply together. Well, one of them is a five. The other two have to multiply together to foot to be equal to four. And because they're in the same box of the Sudoku, we can't double two anymore. So we've now got to have a one four pair. So in fact, look, let's finish off this pencil marking correctly. This is, there's a five in one of those and there is no two anywhere. Oh. That doesn't seem to actually do anything, does it? Um, bobbins. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, I thought that was going to be very interesting. Well, let's let's check this Kropke dot then, because I saw that this is going to have trouble being a six, because five and seven are already in the in the box. So this can't be a six. So that means it's an eight or a nine, because it also can't be a seven up here. So this is eight, nine, this is six. Ah, ah, now that means this is six and this is seven. Now you're quite right if you're saying I could have got that from this seven. You're right, but it wouldn't be a cracking the cryptic video without some examples of appalling scanning. And there we go, we've added that to the collection for this video. So now sixes and sevens have to be down in these three squares in box five by Sudoku. Um, and this is a one four five triple. I'm wondering about this Kropke dot because I've got a one four five triple and an eight nine looking at this square. So the only options for this square are two. Oh, hang on. No, I only want to highlight this square. Are two, three, six, and seven. Ah, now this is interesting. I had something else I'd not scanned, but look at this row. I've got a one, two, four, triple here. So that can't be two and it can't be three because if it's three, it needs to have a two or a four on its Kropke dot to be consecutive and two and four are not available. So this is six or seven and it's not seven. No, hang on, it's not six. This square can't be five. There's a five in one of those and it can't be seven because of that. So it's a seven. And it might need to have an eight onto, onto it, I think, because it can't have a six. Yeah, that's a seven, eight pair. And we are all, yeah, we're nearly cooking with gas here. Now there's a nine in one of these squares. So there's a nine up there. We've got all sorts of digits now, given along row four of the grid. We just need threes, sixes, and nines into these three squares. Let's have a look at that, three, six, nine. We've almost got a triple there as well, look. That is close, but no cigar. Five is restricted into one of these squares. Um, uh, yeah, I can place five actually. And the reason I can place five is that this can't be a five, because if it's a five, this, this cell, which is consecutive with five, needs to be a four or a six, and it can't be. So we can place five in the box, which means this square needs to be a four or a six. This square needs to now be a three or a seven. Oh, and still we don't quite get quadruplification in column eight. Five here though is nice because now we know where the five goes on our zero, our mid zero here. So that's not a five anymore. Fives, I've done all the fives. Oh, that's strange, but welcome. Um, done all the fives. But having said I've done all the fives, this square here has got to be a one, two or a four just to complete box eight look. So, oh, this square's a nine. When we got this three, we could have resolved that, so that's a nine. Ah, ah, yeah, okay. And now where does nine go in column eight? It's got to go here. So these squares over here have become a three, six pair. Three, six. And I'm wondering about this Kropke dot now, because 
these four squares are two, seven, eight, and nine. So there's no two on the Kropke dot because we can't put a one or a three on it. So there's a two in one of those squares and that's beautiful because that fixes this square is an eight. This puzzle is absolutely gorgeous. Um, one, two pair here. So now, uh, yeah, now we know there's an eight on the Kropke dot. So this is from seven, eight, and nine. which might be useful, but I can't see how. Um, right, so where do we look next? Probably at one of the crop key dots we've not used. We've not used this crop key dot. And actually this square is restricted, I've just noticed, because look, I've got a one four pair on this zero. So effectively, we've got five digits placed in column three. So this square here has to be either three six seven or nine and this square it's not six and the reason it's not six is this square would have to be five or seven which it can't be so this is odd this is an odd digit so this is an even digit because it's consecutive with an odd digit and it's not six because there's a six in the box already so this is two four or eight which is almost sort of feel like there's something going on in column four but maybe not um okay i'm a bit loath to look at this crocky docs i don't think there's too much too much looking at it let me just have a have i missed some sudoku this would be very like me it's got to be a two in one of those squares in row in row four because of this one, two, four, triple. You can see that this square can't be a two. I don't think that does anything. Or can I resolve this zero somehow a bit further? It's not immediately obvious to me how anyway. So I've got a six here, so this square can't be a six. Ah, so now I've got a 789 triple in column 2. So that means these two squares have got to be from 3, 4 or 6, which, <laughs> which is as, use, as useful as a chocolate teapot. Bobbins. Um, oh. So is it is it this Kropke dot? Is that somehow doing something that I'm not appreciating? This square here can't well, this square here has got lots of options. It could be one, two, three, seven, and eight, just looking at the the digits we've already got in box nine. Oh, it can't be three. There's a three in the column. Okay, so it's one, two, seven, or eight. Ah, it's not one because this square would have to be a two, and the two is up there in box six, so it's not one. Whoa, is it two? If it's two, this square's got to be, ah, oh, no, it's not. Oh, good, right, so suddenly this square has become potent in a way I hadn't understood. This square can't be two, because this square would have to be a one, which it can't be, because there's a one, four pair in the row, or three, which it can't be. So this square is seven or eight, oh, there's seven, eight pair in box nine. So these are from one, two, and three. And that's it. Right. I'm going to check this digit out in a moment, but I've just noticed I've now have a tree. I've achieved quadruplication in, um, in column, column eight. And that means this square, you see this, we've got one, two, three, four. So this square can't be a four anymore. So that's a six, which means this square is a seven. That square is a six by Sudoku. This square is not a seven anymore. Um, let's check what this digit can be then, because this digit has can't be six, so it's got to oh it's got to be eight. If it, it's got to be a high digit, and once it can't be six, seven, or nine, it's got to be eight to be consecutive. So that's a seven. That's an eight. That's a nine. And this is a seven. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. This eight is now telling us the resolution of the eight and the nine pairs. 
9 goes here in box 5. We've still got to place 2 and 3 into these squares. We can probably do that, but I can't immediately see how to do it. Um, 3 can be placed in box 6. It can go only go there. So this square is 1, 2 or 4. 3, ah, the 3 there is resolving the central box look. So we've actually nearly finished this. That can no longer be a 2. That doesn't prevent this from being a 3, unfortunately. This square up here has got to be a 1, 2 or a 4 to complete column 6. This is not a 2 down here. I'm almost tempted to colour in these 1s and 4s. It looks like they're doing something, doesn't it, around... Uh, around the central box. Ah, and that square's a writing. Oh, in fact, look, that square's a writing as well. That's a two and that's a seven. Good grief. Now, does this keep going? That is the next question. We've got, yeah, we've got a one four pair now in this column. I don't know how long that's been there, but that square there is therefore an eight which means that is not a 3. 8 is here by Sudoku in box 3. The, oh, we can, yeah, we can finish this. We need to put a 7 in column 8. That's got to go there. This 7 is fixing this square as a 9. This square is a 9 by Sudoku. This square is a 3 by Sudoku, just to complete column Four, and that square's got to be a one, two, or a four. And I almost feel like we're, it does feel like we're getting towards an end here, doesn't it? Um, I don't know why I said that. Why did I say that? That's so short-sighted. When I get stuck in the next instant for half an hour, it's going to feel like I was very, very stupid. Um, <laughs> hang on a minute, let me just see. I must, this must be nearly done. I could put nine in there. So this square's got to be three or six only because it can't be four because of what's above it. Ah, so now I can put seven in there. How many sevens have we done? All of them. How many eights have we done? All of them. How many nines have we done? All of them. Okay, how many sixes have we done? Not all of them. Sixes. There's got to be a six up here in box three and we've got to put oh, i see so we've got three four six triple in column in column two we're going to get to a point very soon where we've pencil marked the whole grid aren't we and we've got a three four six triple in box one as well in these three squares that can't be three so this is one two four or six I am going to pencil mark the whole grid. Here we go. One, two, four, six. Full pencilification uh, achieved. One, two, four, six. Okay, so what do we do? Is it going to be the zeros that resolve it? Maybe. Maybe it's. I think it's either going to be a bent triple or a zero. There's one of the zeros will be able to be. Um, deduced. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to colour the ones and fours, wasn't I? Let's do that. This square can't be the same as this square. So that square there will make that blue. This square here will make this green. So this square is going to have to be blue. This square, oh, hang on, let's, lo let's lose the orange now. I don't think the orange is playing a full part. Um, that's got to be green. So one of these two squares is green. This square is green. One of these two squares is green. This square, ah, that's interesting. This square is definitely blue because neither of these squares can be one or four. Therefore, this square is not a two, which we could have seen if I just used the two in the grid. So I don't think that has taken us forward very far. And this square has a home in one of those two squares. And then one of these two squares. Um, I, 
Ah. Hang on a minute. Let me just think about this for a second. Fours. This square is interesting because if we look at this quadruple in column eight, we know there's a four in one of those two squares. We also know that one of these two squares is a one or a two. Now that's whatever that it digit is up here, let's make it yellow. Whatever, the, whichever one of these is a one or a two, it's got to go here in box nine. So it's different from this. This is, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, that, that this does the puzzle, I think, because they're going to get this digit by the power of multiplication. Because whatever these two digits are now, they are a four and a yellow. But four and yellow are not the same as this. So these, these digits here are three different digits. They are the digits one, two, and four because this because this one cannot be yellow, so it needs its own color. We'll award it the, the color of purple. So if this is a one, two, four triple, I can multiply the numbers one, two, and four together. I get eight, but we know that these four squares together add up to six, mul multiply together to give sixteen. So this square I think has to be a two, and if that square is a two. I'm getting some more, I'm getting more digits. Now that square's got to be a four, just to complete row three. This is now, this now has been established as the yellow digit. So this square here, it, oh, in fact, it's a one because there's a two in the row now. So that yellow is one, that's one, that's two, that's four, that's one. Blue is one, green is four. I know all my colors have got mixed up as a result of this, but never mind. Um, oh, hang on. I just don't know what I did then. I need to get rid of one and four from here. So two and six get remaining. Um, these two squares are no longer two. So this is a one, four pair. That seems to be nice in box one. That gives me a four here. This two is resolving my two and my six. So column nine is done. This four is resolving my four and my one. That means this square's a two, this square's a one. This two is fixing a two and a three in box nine. This is beautiful, beautiful logic. Three, three and six go in, three and six go. The puzzle's, <laughs> the puzzle's finished, I think. Yes. Oh, I absolutely love that piece. That is so clever. It's really misleading as well. And I love the maths at the start. You know, appreciating you have to have double fives on the zeros um, is, you know, that that in and of itself is quite is quite an interesting thing to have in a Sudoku. But what I really like is that this thermo <laughs> is so misleading. I thought it was going to be completely useless because it's average is basically an average number. If you think about each double digit along here, you know, given that you could have any double digit from 12 to 98 as a legitimate entry, the average of the numbers 98 and 12 isn't that far away from 50. So it feels like this is not important, but it is because the tens digits all have to be different. And from that, you can actually work out the structure of this whole thermometer. And then that fed back into the 400 numbers. It's, it's a brilliant puzzle. It really is. It's so fitting for our 400,000 subscriber, you know, uh, video that it's a puzzle of this quality. Thank you so much for making it this good. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Let me know in the comments. Give Peter some love. Uh, he deserves it. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.